Uh, this has got to be good for you. Uh, the last couple of years have had to be tough for your job. Oh, it's still a great job. I, I got to tell you guys, um, when I drove up and I saw the line, honest to Pete, it, like, hey, Pete. Hi, Tom. <laughs> I was jacked to add another pun to the mix, but it really, I, I, it took my breath away. Like, in a sense, and I know this sounds over the top, but it, it said to me, we're back. Now, obviously, that has to translate to the floor, but the response, and, you know, we've been coming here 20 years, was, I don't know that it's ever been a bigger crowd. It's pretty cool to see the reaction to these two young players. Yeah, somebody just asked me, you know, this is my fourth or fifth year here, and they said, have you ever seen a crowd like this? They said, nah, normally it's... You know, you can walk around, you can see everything. You can't get close to a lot of things today, and I think that's a pretty good indication of the excitement. And, you know, what excites you the most after what you, you know, gone through the last couple of years? You're part of the organization. You're calling the games every night. You're seeing guys come in and out of the organization. What is the exciting thing for you? Well, I think maybe most simply stated, there's a lot more talent. When you look at the roster and you're having these two players in Embiid and Sarge from the 2014 draft class and, this year's number one pick in Ben Simmons and the acquisition of Gerald Bayless and Gerald Henderson and Rodriguez. I mean, you're, you're really, you're adding some real quality talent to the mix. Plus the, the young players, the Covingtons, the Jeremy Grants that have been a part of the mix and that continue to improve every year. So I think that's what's really exciting. I, I think, with, you know, again, to be as bare bones about it as possible, we're going to be able to compete better. How about Tom? The way you've seen the arena, too, I mean, there's nights where if your voice is echoing across the other side, we were talking about season tickets, there is a core group of fans, I think, because I saw, like, a, a Delaware jersey go by, you know, I saw the 87ers mascot, right? You see, like, those core fans that follow, but when you look at the number of people here today, do you think, then, there's just a record number of people that are starting to buy in or have bought in? Well, I think in anything, you want a buzz, you want it. And I think the Sixers have that right now with, with Simmons. And, again, to your point, Pete, there's been a core group of fans that love basketball that have been through. I mean, there's season ticket holders that go back to the convention center mm -hmm. and uh, or, you know, have been a part of the program for a number of years. And that's who, like, is uh, if Mike asks, like, what are you most excited about? I, I would turn the phrase a little bit and say, who do you want this for the most? most? And there's a list. Brett Brown's right up there. But. First and foremost, it's those fans and these players. And these players, a lot of them haven't been through it before, but they're the ones that perform. They're the ones that have to put in the work. And you want to see, you know, for these for these young players that have been a part of the Sixers, see them turn the corner and see the fruits of their labor. But really, and it's for the marketplace, for the fans to be able to, to what we endured uh, for the last few years, to see competitive, exciting basketball. That, I mean, that's... If you ask me personally, I like the competition, and, and basketball is my game. And uh, and I think it's going to be back in a big way. And, and again, these young players are going to, I'm going to say, they're going to be, they're going to make a lot of mistakes. And they're deserving of the mistakes. And the reason I say that is they're young. So, you know, let's be honest, some of the same errors we saw in with four minutes to go where, whoa, we just turned it over three right. times in a row. It's, it's potentially going to happen again because Ben Simmons hasn't been in that situation or Embiid hasn't been, you know, with the ball in his hand with the game on the line at this level. So there's going to be some ups and downs, but I, I think we're really in for an exciting ride. Tom, uh, Michael Kasky, Bowman. You know, you, you just touched on the age of the team and how, and how it's young and comprised of, you know, a lot of talent, but a lot of uh, young guys. What kind of, you know, are you expecting a lot of growing pains? you know, this season as the unit kind of gets a feel for itself and gels together, you know, basically what are, you, what are your expectations really for? Well, in, in a season? sense, I sort of just touched on that, but when you say growing pains, you know, uh, I think naturally, because not only have these guys not played at this level in terms of Sarich, Embiid, Simmons, they haven't played together. And that's that takes more than a seven game preseason. That takes weeks, that takes months, that takes practice time which in the NBA oftentimes is you get short shrift at that end just because of the, the travel and the sheer number of the game. So, you know, and it's going to take longer than just this year. I mean, hopefully this is a process building toward uh, return playoff appearance, the phrase that was used, sustained success. So there's definitely going to be some growing pains, you know. And But I, I, I think what, you know, Pete, to, corner, to get back to your point, you're going to get people that are drawn into the Philadelphia 76ers that have been sports fans 
and they're around the water cooler, and maybe we lost a particular game, but they're going to go, whoa, did you see that pass that Simmons had? Where, you know, it might be fans that don't typically sit around and talk about, you know, the the games in December in the NBA, right. but they're going to be drawn into the conversation because it's going to be exciting, and I think it's going to be back among the people. Yeah, uh, I, I want to ask you about the fact, he mentioned that, the, you know, I've been to a lot of games, and you know, I'm actually surprised that the crowds are what they are. Are you surprised that so many people have stuck with this team? Well, for one, it's a great environment. You know what I mean? Like, it's still a friendly, fan-friendly for young kids. You know, it's it's not just the basketball, and it sounds like it's coming right out of the marketing arm, but <laughs> it's the T-shirts, it's the Sixers, Sixers, and every part of the going to the game. I mean, it's not back to convention hall i'm sure the halftime entertainment was the ball rack you know what i mean it's center court and now it's a hundred different things as we all know the right. music every single thing and and that's not just with the sixers obviously that's with everything and, and let's be honest you're competing for the entertainment dollar you know you go to the movies and you know somebody's 60 70 dollars well that's you're, you're competing for that so you have to entertain people and, and I think that's part of why the people have come out. And it's still like the best basketball in the world. Sure. And that, that's the hook for me. Hey, um, how much have you seen of Joel? I haven't seen a lot. I've seen, I've seen the situations where after the guys go in, like, for instance, at a home game, uh, it's at 45 on the clock in terms of prior to the game and then he stays out there as brett brown said a couple of years ago at nerland's like this is his game you know what i mean this is for these people uh but i've seen enough to know that i mean holy man alive like if this skill set transfers <laughs> right it's going to be he just schooled a bunch of five-year-olds you guys catching that <laughs> no we heard the roars. I had the rosary <laughs> beads out by the way i was i'm glad that's over but uh no, it's an incredible, like when he and Simmons, this, the money shot earlier today was when they both were out on the court and the fans, hundreds of people, rows deep, were around yeah. them and they were taking selfies with one another. These guys go back to high school. They're friends. Simmons right. himself said they're like brothers off the court. And my whole point is Joe is like three, four inches taller than 6'10 Ben Simmons. Now, three of that was probably his hair, but, <laughs> but he's a big man. He's a massive And to have man. that skill set. Um, and he's got, you know, you need a little nasty to be successful at this level. And I, I think he's got that. These guys, these guys, again, it goes back to competition. It's exciting. Now, those are the two guys that are here today. Were you watching the Olympics I for Rodriguez oh, or oh, for yeah, Sarich? Right. Or, and so just I told like, Jerry oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> when <laughs> Ben Simmons had his press conference, and uh, Jerry's been, been so great. I mean, it's, I can't believe Jerry Colangelo and Brian Colangelo are part of our organization. It's just a, a tremendous thing. And and obviously more Brian right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but I told Jerry, that's the one thing where I have to go into my own room or up to the bedroom or in my office and watch the USA basketball by myself. I, I can't. And half of it's because of the referees. Right, like, right. Our, our dog was sleeping. I kept waking her up. Cause, you know, but, no, I watched those guys. The first yeah. sequence, it was, you know, uh, Dario versus Spain. Right. And I, the first sequence, the way he guarded – he gets the rebound. He brings it down. I just, I was like, wow, Had thank you. Huge this, this kid yeah. is going to be a, yeah. Yep. I wasn't able to stay up for the rest of that. But he, he's, I, he's, he's really, I think, another player that's going to really add to the mix. You need these glue guys. You don't need everybody to score 25 points. You know what I'm saying? And he looks like a tough guy that can play and help out in a lot of different ways. How, uh, how happy do you think Brett's going to be to have not only like an infusion of talent, but some you know veterans on the roster? You got Gerald Henderson, yeah. Sergio, Jared Bayless. Uh, Abs you know, that's absolutely, that's a big bump up from last year, which has to you know be a relief for him. No, right? Because at, at a certain point, you need other voices. You know, like at this level, the assistant coaches do a lot of the coaching because you need somebody else. There's so many timeouts. There's so many practices. There's so many pregame, halftime, postgame talks. And, you know, like I said earlier, I'm a huge Brett Brown fan. Like, the fact that he does the interview that we were able to play on your air every time the Sixers are on the radio station is, uh, to me, like a tribute to him, how much time he's given all of us over the course of the years. But without question, and this guy's got, you know, we had to kind of keep things a little more basic in terms of the basketball because they were young players and make sure they were able to excel at the given coverages on a, like in a defensive way and 
and now he's going to be able to build on that as we go forward. I think you're going to see the group stay together a little bit longer. There won't be as much personnel transition in and out. So, you know, I just, you know, I'm, I'm a hoop head. And I was watching NBA TV the other night, yeah. and it was the Sun Spurs, and I'm looking for, forget Duncan and Pop. I'm, where's my man Brett Brown back there? And he's helping diagram the, the Nash Stoudemire pick and roll. So, now he he's... I'm telling you, he's he's the real deal, Brett Brown. And, and just wait until he gets some big-time talent like the Sixers are getting right you, now. You, you mentioned, I wrote it down, you know, Dario watching him in the Olympics. Well, it was very interesting, just him getting the rebound and not having to outlet, just knowing the intuition. And you saw Ben do that in the Summer League. Yeah. You see a 6'10 guy grab the rebound yeah. and just do it himself and That's not huge. have to outlet. That's you know, huge. Having those two guys, that's a skill that – we didn't know Dario maybe had was that here's a 6'10 guy that can get the rebound himself and then take it up the sidelines or go up the middle and then help somebody finish on the break. No, you, multiple ball handlers and, and initiating your offense in, in different variations is always a positive thing. And to be able to bring it in from the side, you know, like it's not back in the day was where's Cheeks and we're going to give it to number 10 and, right. gonna, you know, bring it up that way. But, uh, no, it, it's good, and especially the way the NBA is going in terms of, a lot of touches, a lot of movement, a lot of swings, getting the ball reversals. To be able to have guys that can handle the balls, it's really good. The growing pains you talked about. I, I sat there when I watched Ben Simmons in Summer League and the way he was able to distribute the basketball, I could foresee as they start to get together the ooh moments of being, oh, my God, I can't believe he threaded that pass. But the guy at the other end goes, oh, my God, I can't believe he threaded that pass. Yeah, right. right. I mean, that, that probably could be one thing as well, right? No, I think so. I mean, as a – Believe me, you're gonna come a up lower, with adjectives. lower level. But as a former player, like you got a guy on your team like that, you better be ready. Right. You know, you got to have your head on a swivel and get ready and turn and get ready to catch that ball. And there's no question that that's the innate part of his game. That that's I think what the size and that instinctive ability to play the game and to move that ball. And you know, and again, you got to go back to his father was a professional player. At okay Australia, but even on the college level, he was a very successful player, and so I mean that's where the body comes from. Because mm -hmm. if you saw his dad, I mean his dad looked like he could be a tight end in the NFL tonight. Right, he was huge, and then uh, and then the schooling that goes on. Do you know what I mean? Like these guys, it's like Kenny Griffey Jr. He walked into the clubhouse. It wasn't like a wow or Jeremy Grant or Jaron Grant. These guys have been around it. Stephen Curry, Seth Curry, these guys have been around again, and I think it's the same a little bit for Ben, albeit down under. He's not wowed, you know yeah. what I mean? He hasn't been floored. He's a really, I mean, to watch him beat and watch these young guys interact with the crowd, it's very, it's refreshing, you know what I mean? It's, it's right. Pretty, well, they're, well, they're here, special. first of all. I mean, there were, there were six yeah, players. I think he's having more fun than right. any of us. That's the thing, though. The, the, how much I was pretty surprised that Embiid was on the list to be here. Like, the, the fact that he's out in a public setting kind of indicates that there's got to be some confidence that he's going to be out there. We're not going to oh, put yeah. him out there to disappoint no, you. No, he just said himself, he's ready. He's ready for training camp. You know, he, the guy has put in a lot of work. You know, and I think about that because uh, it just his whole situation, he hasn't been in America for, what, less than six years? Right. I don't know exactly, but... To not be able to play and have your livelihood taken away has had to be tough mentally. Have you witnessed or seen a lot of ups and downs just emotionally from a young kid who breaks his foot, can't play, thinks he's ready to go, has to do it again, sit out another season, reports in the media, back and forth, hasn't been able to do it? I mean, have yeah. you seen I mean, a guy who's fair, kind of go up and down? To be fair, have I witnessed it? No, just because I'm not around Joe, Joe that much. But I think everything you've said is probably – accurate without having to you know to know personally but i'm sure you know what i mean like he's gone through Very quite different. a bit he's had some family loss since he's been with the 76ers uh you know i i think having bahamute around that first year was probably huge uh, advantage for him i think because uh yeah i mean think about it we always say with these young players you know what were you doing at that age well you might not have been going through quite as much as, as he's been going through, both physically and mentally. Sixers uh, training camp the 27th at Stockton. How about First, that? Back yeah. in South Jersey, guys. <laughs> we like it. Uh, we're okay with that. I don't yeah, know how the Sixers feel yeah. about I mean, they were hoping the concrete went a little faster, but we're okay yeah, with that. Sure. October 4th, it'll be uh, the Sixers and the Celtics in the preseason. And UMass and Amherst, and, uh, yeah. 
hopefully the debut of Ben and Joel together. Yep. No, I, I think it's going to be neat. And I think not just the two players, but the way they play. I mean, in pick and roll basketball, is such an integral part of NBA hoops at this stage. I think they're going to be involved in quite a bit of uh, says sequences. He wants to come back to shoot. Oh, he'll be in the he yeah. Come off the bench. Yeah, he'll be in the corner waiting to catch a shoot. You need that too. UMass Amherst, you said. Yeah. Yeah. What? Where at that? Uh, Mullins Center. Okay. The Mullins. Yeah. yeah. Remember the Curry Hicks cage. The what's that? The Curry Hicks cage. No. That, that was their version of McGonagall Hall. It, it oh, probably they had sat that. about twenty eight hundred oh, okay. people on campus. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah, but they're not playing the game there. No, it still no, exists, I'm looking but forward. I was just up in New England. I'm looking forward to going there, and uh, I'm sure Brett will be happy to be up there. Yeah, too. no, no, <laughs> it's it's a it's a neat thing, and to play the Celtics in their backyard is always cool. Good stuff. Well, we'll have of course Sixers basketball back on our air on 97.3 ESPN. The voice you'll hear those nights will be the our voice guest you're Tom McGinnis. Yes. Appreciate Thank it, guys. You, Appreciate the sport. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Tom McGinnis, everybody.